minority. So why are they being picked up in majority? If you think it's an act of Kashmir militant, if you have got accords, we have got no doubt with that. But do you mean to say the LTT can't come to Bombay? Do you mean to say Ulfa can't come to Bombay? Do you mean to say Six can't come to Bombay? You cannot say 100% this act of being Muslim. You can say high possibilities. And if you show proof, we are with you. What we are trying to tell you that identify the people who are responsible, catch them and punish them. But not thousands of people, innocent Muslims, being rounded up. Terrorism is not the monopoly of any religion. It is not. Terrorism is not the monopoly of any religion. It is not. We know there are several records. Just a couple of months back, according to the ATS of Maharashtra, 16 members were arrested from a hardcore Hindu organization. They were involved in three bomb blasts in mosques. Mahmoudi Mosque in Parbani, one of the mosques in Jalna, one in Pura, three. And recently on 6th of April, in one place, by mistake, a bomb detonates, by mistake. While they were making a bomb, it exploded. It killed four people and 11 were injured. When inquiries were made, many people belonged to the same hardcore Hindu organization. And they found there that the plan was that to attack the mosque in the guise of Sikh. You know, this took place in Nandit. Sikh, why? Because there was a rift going on between the Muslims and Sikh. A Sikh girl married a Muslim boy, so there was tension, so they wanted to get advantage. So they wanted to do an act in the guise of Sikh. There are cases we know that Hindus have attacked wearing caps and beards. So you can't say 100% Muslims are involved. Maybe high possibility, I'm not saying no. Recently, a few days back, on Friday, 8th of September, four bomb blasts took place in Malikam. One outside one of the mosques, one outside a graveyard, in which 35 innocent Muslims were killed and more than 100 innocent Muslims were injured. Again, prime suspect, LAT. Can be, but not prime. Imagine, it is a game plan. It's a no name game. If you go to America, it's Al Qaeda. Here it is LET. According to an article that came in the DNA on the 6th of September, the person in the name of Joseph, he writes that the foreign experts they tell that if you involve yourself too much in the blame game, you lose focus and the main culprits are never caught. You do a proper investigation. If really they are caught, they have to be punished. Irrespective of whether the terrorists are Muslim or non-Muslims, whether they belong to Kashmir, whether to Pakistan, whether Ulfa, whether LTT, if they are proved to be involved in that, they should be punished. I am not here to support any terrorist act, not at all. But if you want to get to the bottom of it, we should know that this should be done meticulously. We should take the citizens in confidence. One of the other cause is the media. Mainly that media which is controlled by the politicians. We have to be careful of this. And this media, they can convert black to white, day to night, hero into a villain, villain into hero. And we see that very often. If you see my tapes, I have given very few examples. But in India, it's fortunate that the more popular media is not controlled by the politicians. And we find that this media really gave the true picture. Whether it be the Gujarat rights, the Bombay rights in 93, or even today, when the Muslims are being harassed, the media, whether it be the newspaper, the news channels, they have really given a true picture of what's happening. Not 100%. Sometimes they get involved in news which is sensational. So when they get the news without checking up, they give it. If it's sensational, they give it. But as a whole, we have to agree, the media has been honest. I'm talking about non-Muslim media. I'm not talking about the Muslim media. And here we find that they were honest and they projected the real picture. But what we have to be careful is of the media which is controlled by the politicians. And as far as the judiciary system is concerned in India, the innocent citizen of India, especially the Muslim victims. We have faith in the Indian judiciary system. Though some people say that some are corrupt, they are blasting the committee, but as a whole, we know most of the judges, they are upright and they are honest. We only hope that these people are not influenced by the politicians. So far I know 
most of the judges, they don't care much for the politicians. If once the politicians get hold of the judicial system, then God save this country. Yet, we have faith in the judicial system. And to conclude, we have to realize that since we know that the cause of terrorism is injustice, the cause of terrorism is wrongdoing to a particular group of people, this thing should be stopped. How can we stop? As I mentioned, number one, the politicians, they should be honest, they should be just. They should not go for the vote bank and do things which are wrong. Once they are honest and they are just, irrespective they lose their seat, you see to it that terrorism will stop. Point number two, the innocent Indian citizens, they should not be instigated by the politicians and do wrong things and kill other innocent human beings. Point number three, the police, they should be upright. They should be just. If someone is being harmed, they should see to it that he's protected. They should not be ploy of the politicians. I know there are times that they can be transferred, but if every policeman in India is honest, the new policeman who's transferred will also be honest. So what will the politician do? If 100% of the policemen, I'm not blaming all of them, Please don't get me wrong. I know most of them honest they want to do, but because they are under the pressure of the politicians, they are afraid that they'll be transferred, they'll be harassed. But if all the policemen get together and say, let's all of us be honest, if they transfer you, the new person coming will also be honest. Today itself, most of this trouble of injustice will stop. And last but not the least, people cannot take the law in their hand. They cannot kill other innocent human beings, even if they belong to the same community who has an injustice on you. If we take this and we see to it that injustice is stopped, then surely India will be a very good country. It is estimated that in the next, by 2020, India would be a superpower. If all the Hindus are Muslims, if we live together, if we love each other harmoniously, we may have our differences. The differences will be there. We live with our differences. But we love each other and we live peacefully and harmoniously. Again, India will be a superpower. And Mahatma Gandhi, he said that if India has to improve, it should be ruled by a dictator as honest and as upright as Hazrat Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi, the father of a nation, he advised the best thing India can do is have a dictator like Hazrat Umar. May Allah be pleased with him, Radhi Allah He was an honest person. When it came for justice, he did not see whether he was a Muslim or a Muslim. For justice, he gave justice. Therefore, he got the title Al Farooq, the person who differentiated truth from falsehood. I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, Wakul Jal Haq Mazak al Batil, in the Labatil Akana Zahuka. When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. I would like to end my talk by giving the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson, who said that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Jazakallah, thank you for your appreciation of the talk. We wonder how awesome and corrective would be the question and answer session. We start the question and answer session quickly. May I point the rules? Your question should be on the topic. It should be brief and to the point, and only one question at a time may be asked. Five microphones have been provided in the auditorium. One on my left for the gents, one on my right for the gents, one in the rear for the ladies, on the first floor balcony, one more microphone, number four, for the gents. Those who would like to ask questions are kindly requested to line at one of the mics to put forward your question. Yes, the brother here can put forward his question. Microphone number two. Yes, brother. We will request you to ask quickly and briefly so we can cover more in the less time we have. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Muhammad Arafat. I'm a student. You said in your talk, two wrongs does not make a right. A few months... We will allow non-Muslim the first preference, please. So any non-Muslim in the queue, they are most welcome. It is always a policy in our organization that we give first preference to our guests. If any non-Muslim like to ask a question, they are most welcome. Any non-Muslim, with the brothers and sisters, they are most welcome. The time is limited. So any non-Muslim would like to ask a question, they would be given the first chance. Hey, non-Muslim, yes, but the most welcome. 
is not the monopoly of any religion. It is not. मेरा नाम श्याम है श्याम सुनार मैं मराठी महानगर पेपर में काम करता हूँ पत्रकार हूँ आपकी बातों से मतलब आ, मेरे पास शब्द नहीं है क्या बोलना लेकिन ये मुझे लगता है कि भारत में हिंदू और मुस्लिम एक होने के लिए कुछ ना कुछ होना चाहिए ऐसा मुझे लगता है मैं करता आया हूँ दस बारह साल से लेकिन आपके मुंह से मैं ये सुनना चाहता हूँ कि भारत में बस्ती में मैं तो चालीस गांव इस गांव में रहता था मुंबई में रेजुलेटी के लिए आया हूँ बस्ती बस्ती में जो हिंदू और मुस्लिम है इनके दिल में अगर गलत फहमी है और वो है भी सही मायने में कुछ हद तक है तो वो दूर करने के लिए आपकी क्या सुझाव है कि हिंदू और मुस्लिम दोनों कम्युनिटी के लोग कैसे इकट्ठे आ सकते हैं वेल आफर गुड क्वेश्चन दैट वॉट इज द सजेशन फ्रॉम मी दैट हाउ कैन वी गेट द हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम ऑन अ कॉमन प्लेटफॉर्म हाउ कैन वी कम टूगेदर द रिप्लाई टू दिस इज आई हैव गिवन अ टॉक on similarities between hinduism and islam i have given the talk in bombay i have given the talk in chennai i have given in other parts of india and we find there that tens of thousands have attended in bombay about 20000 in chennai a similar number and other parts of india and many non muslims have attended many hindus have attended thousands of them and many of them told me that brother zakir There was a person just a comment that what I did not know about Hinduism in the past 40 years of my life, I have learned in the past four hours. Yeah. I follow the guidance of the Quran of Surah Al Imran, chapter three, verse 64, which says, "Taala will akal mitin sawa in bayna bayna kum." Come to common terms as me, us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na uda illa Allah. That we worship none but one God. What we realize. that i don't believe in interfaith dialogue we say that hinduism is the same islam is the same christianity is the same this is just a gimmick if i ask the hindu pandit will you become a muslim he say no if i ask the muslim will you become a christian he say no if i ask the priest will you become a hindu he say no so what is same it's not same we have to agree that there are differences but there are similarities also let us agree at least to follow the commonalities what is different keep it aside so what i say that take all the religious scriptures whether it be the bhagavad gita whether it be the veda the upanishad the bible the quran at least what is common what is different keep it aside we can discuss some other time but at least what is common let us agree to follow it and i again i showed so many similarities so many so you can refer to my video cassette and what happens many of them are not aware the muslim are not aware of their religion similarly the hindu are not aware of their religion many of the muslim objected similarity between islam and hindu is impossible so many of the people came to the doctor attack the rabi am boli what nonsense hindu and muslim same ho hi nahi sakta hai but when they heard the talk they were shocked those who came to attack they agreed with the talk similarly many hindus came So what we realize that what is common we should follow, and number one is Allah na abda illa that we worship none but one God. That is the most common thing, and which you can give quotations, and we can give quotation from the Vedas, from the Bhagavad Gita. It is mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one. Ek kam evidityam, God is only one without a second. It is mentioned in the Shweta Shita Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Na cha se kafij, janita na chadipa. Of Him there are no Lord. He has got no parents. These are Sanskrit quotations. That means Almighty God has got no parents. He has got no Lord. Furthermore, if we analyze. It is mentioned in the Shweta Shita Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number nineteen. Na tasti pati masti. Of that God there are no images. There is no pratima. There is no photograph. There is no idol. There is no image. Same thing in the Jewish faith, chapter number three to verse number three. Na tasse pati masti. Of that God, there are no images. So if you go back to your Vedas and your religious scriptures, it speaks about one God. So people many times are not aware of the scriptures. And when the question just a couple of days back, I had given an interview to Star News. They asked me, Brother Zakir, what is your view regarding Vande Mataram? Can the Muslims say or not? I said, "What do the Muslims say? Come to it afterwards. I'll first tell you what the Hindu scriptures say." <laughs> you were shocked. What do I mean by that? I said, "If anyone is a scholar of the Veda, the Veda agrees that God has got no pratima. So when you say Vande Mataram, that this country is my mother, and you call it God, a person who is a scholar, I am not talking about the normal people who don't know." about the scriptures but you ask a scholar he will say that vande matram goes against the vedas because vande matram in no less than three places it says i bow down to thee 
I worship thee. If you see about the Arya Samaj and you see the various top scholars, they think that according to the Vedas, idol worship is not permitted. There are verses in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20, which says that you should not do idol worship. So here when you go back to your scriptures, unfortunately, they believe in a form of pantheism. So even according to the Vedas, if you're a good scholar, this song, Vande Mataram, that I bow down and I worship thee, as I quoted in Sanskrit, about Upanishad, it's against. Even in Islam, there are 12 lines which are objectionable. Three times it is said, Vande Mataram, which means I bow down to thee. If once it says that this country is my mother, once it says I will kiss the feet, once it says about the divine things, about the smile, talking about divinity, it calls it Lakshmi, it is called Durga, all these things are objectionable. We Muslims, we love this country, but we will not bow down to anyone but to Almighty God. Even a mother, even a mother who was born in a womb for nine months, we love her, we respect her, but we will not bow down to our mother. Your own mother, the number one human being who we love and respect in the world after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will even not bow down to a prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is it required that we should sing this song Mande Mataram? It is a political gimmick. Politicians, they thought they get the word bank. They even made a gimmick on the date. You know, it was written by Bankin Chand Chattopadhyay in 1876. It was published in 1882. So where is century come now? And where is 7 September? They made a mistake, the politician, political gimmick. <laughs> Furthermore, even a Muslim living in Saudi Arabia, he cannot bow down to his country, Saudi Arabia. Even a Muslim living in Pakistan cannot bow down to Pakistan. It is shirk. So to say that the Indian Muslims are not patriotic, it is our religion. Our creator, our God who has made this country is far superior. So we love this country when required for the truth, we are willing to die for this country. But we will not bow down to anyone but Almighty God. We would prefer questions from non-Muslims first because we have a limited time. I think it would be fair to the occasion. And people who would like to ask questions on slip can kindly write on the slips and pass it on down the aisle. Yes. Any other question with any sister there? A non-Muslim sister? Yes. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to everyone present here. My name is Preeti Sethi. I would like to ask you, sir, as in your talk you have said that Osama Bin Laden, we can't consider him as a terrorist as it is said in BBC and CNN channels. But at the same time we get the same information about the bomb blast and the count which we get about the bomb blast on the same channels. So whether it has to be believed or no. Thank you, sir. The sister has asked a very good question, very relevant question. I said that when we talk about Osama Bin Laden, that if you get information on BBC, that is a terrorist, you don't have to believe. But when we get the count of the bomb blast, do we have to believe? That's what I said, the people controlling. That doesn't mean all the news of BBC is wrong. That news in which they make a hero into a villain, in which they benefit, you have to check up. So here we will see that these normally bomb blast figures that you get, most of them that you find will be somewhat similar. If it's a government channel, of the country in which the bomb blasts have taken place, the figure will be normally low. Why? Because the government wants to show that less people have been killed. Like the police commissioner wrote to me, 187 people killed. Newspaper writes 207. I don't know who's right. I'm not saying that Commissioner A.N. Roy is lying. I'm not saying that. Please don't get me wrong. So here we have to realize that when we get information, we have to see the proof. When we see the proof about Osama bin Laden, even on the channel, it did mention prime suspect sister. Prime suspect. Prime suspect. Do you know, if you go to the website of the U.S. Department of Justice, Info Police, they give the list of the terrorist organizations. Terrorist organizations. 43, 60% are Muslim. Can you guess? Which is the most popular terrorist organization? Can you guess Muslim terrorist organization? Can you guess? No, sorry. Which is the most popular Muslim terrorist organization? Al-Qaeda. You don't get a prize for that. Very easy. <laughs> Al-Qaeda. According to the U.S. Department, you know how many attacks? How many attacks? Ulfa, 749 attacks. Al-Qaeda, only 28. Out of that, 26 alleged, 2 Al-Qaeda claims they did it. According to the site of U.S. Department of Justice, Al-Qaeda claims, all alleged, not a single proof. Even on the official site of U.S. Department of Justice, not a single attack of Al-Qaeda has been proved. I'm not going to support Al-Qaeda. 
Hero when you on deadly went to Afghanistan, she was arrested by the Taliban. She comes back and she asks the question, what are your views about Al-Qaeda? She replies, I doubt whether Al-Qaeda exists. <laughs> so sister, what I'm trying to tell you, that when you get the information, if you are a man of the media or a person of the media, you can realize and you know that this information mostly will be correct, this has to be checked up. So what we have to realize that it is suspect, prime suspect, prime suspect. Even on CNN and BBC, even though they say it's a prime suspect, they are treating him as though he's a culprit. Can you go and kill thousands of Afghans only because of prime suspect? Not even prove. So, but natural sister, when we hear the news, we have to realize that who controls the news, what is the agenda behind, and then we have to be careful what news you take and what you quote. Hope that answers the question, sister. A non-Muslim brother? Uh, the question has been put forward by my non-Muslim friend. Okay, we'll allow that. Okay. Assalamu alaikum sir, myself Saif and I am a management student. Uh, the question is that, uh, do you think that uh, Muslims uh, feel insecurity and that's why can we say that uh, terrorism is its outcome? Thank you sir, your comment please. Brother, well, there's a question that do Muslims feel insecure? And that is the reason terrorist acts are done. I told in my talk the main root cause of terrorism is injustice. It's not insecurity. Insecurity may be part of it, but the main cause is injustice. Injustice and something wrong done to a group of people. If you read an article that came yesterday on Sunday middle, on the eve of the 9-11, one of the very famous persons, name is William, he writes and he gives advice that the root cause is injustice and wrong done to community. And he agrees with the Bombay authorities that there are possibilities that Kashmiris may have done bomb blasts in Bombay, but he says, what is the cause? According to him, the Kashmiris are unmilitant people. They are peace-loving people, so what has forced them to fight? And he gives his view, it is because of democracy which is forged. He says that, not me, eh? it's not my comments. Person who is an expert and give advice to people in the world. He says that the democracy is forged, it is manipulated. That's the reason what we find that they're fighting. Same in Palestine. They're fighting because the rights are taken away. So the main cause of terrorism is injustice done to a group or any wrong done. So to get the rights back, this gives rise to a fight, to a retaliation, which is called terrorism by people opposing it. Those who agree with it, they call good. For example, Bhagat Singh. He fought for the freedom of the country, but the British as he was called terrorist. We call him freedom fighter. So depending upon what is the background, therefore, before you give a label of terrorist, therefore I said terrorism has got different meanings, has got different definitions. It changes because of geographical definition, it changes because of history. So the same person who's called a terrorist by British government, we Indians called him a freedom fighter. So like that, we have to find out the main cause is injustice done to a group of people. It's Christopher Lobo asks, how can you prove that 9-11 was an inside job? But the Lobo has asked that how can I prove 9-11 was an inside job? I've got the proof, I can repeat the proof, it has been proven by other people. Just a few days back, there was an article that came in the newspaper that 75 professors of US they say, they believe that 9-11 was an inside job. And in the article, it was mentioned, it came in Times of India, I think on the 7th of September. It says that 75 professors and scientists belonging to different universities from different parts of US, they believe that 9-11 was an inside job. And they say that there were some politicians in White House who have engineered the destruction of the Twin Towers. And they say the main reason was so that they could attack and they could have control of the oil rich countries. Open secret, I told you. One of the professors by the name of Steve Joel, he says that we do not believe that 19 hijackers and a few men in the cave in Afghanistan could have done such a professional job alone. They could not have done it. We don't believe. And by God, we are going to come to the truth and we are going to expose. We don't believe in the theory of the government. They don't believe in the theory of the government. And he further goes on to say that we as being professors and scientists, we know that the steel beam of 
the twin tower they couldn't have melted at the temperature at which the jet fuel was there and there were systematic bomb explosions which caused this to come down otherwise it cannot come down there are many tips there are many books written against it i happen to watch many of them i even happen to watch the video recording of this professor steve jones and yesterday's paper we had another news 3 days later professor steve jones sent on a paid leave <laughs> imagine paid leave there are many tips if you happen to watch one of the tapes by the name of loose change 911 it was done by a young american of 21 years old he makes a one hour documentary there are many many are there this 911 documentary it has collected clips from the various of cnn or fox channel all the news clipping he took interviews etc and made a one hour documentary and then he says that people who saw the airplane they said it cannot be a passenger carrier it looked like a military plane it didn't have any windows and when he shows the shooting when it comes close to the tower there is another firing done from the wings which hits the twin tower before the plane then further he goes on to prove he says that he had statements of the management the construction company which had constructed the twin towers they said it's impossible the twin tower was made to withstand storm to withstand tornado this plane cannot knock it down and it cannot come down because the fuel burns at 1000 degrees temperature this even for 2000 degrees temperature for hours nothing will happen to it 10 years later he changed his statement and said no it's possible jet fuel can cause damage to the beams and when the professor gave the statement he didn't withdraw his statement back so he was sacked <laughs> furthermore what they did the in the document they show that when the twin towers came down like how you willfully get down any building and he gave statistics that many buildings in new york tall skyscrapers 40 floor 60 floor they caught fire for many hours but none of them came down it is the first building in the history of usa it has come down that way and he showed photograph that when building it deliberately brought down how do they get down that explosion the same way it came down there was systematic bomb blast and people who went to rescue where they did the firemen they were interviewed they said that we were thinking that someone up was pressing the bomb button and the bomb was going out boom 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 so how the twin tower was come down they have given proof furthermore they say that all the proof given by the government they analyzed they said 19 hijackers some of them they were trained as flying of the plane they went to the university and they interviewed the professor do you think that this person can do such an act impossible the way the plane took a turn and i have personally spoken to senior pilots who have flown big boeings and air buses for several years they said it's impossible to take such a turn and imagine just a new person of 200 of our takes a turn what the experts say it has to be a military plane furthermore information given by the government you know phone calls were there phone calls phone call said that they said the passenger in the plane they claimed that they were hijacked one of the phone calls was by a flight attendant she says that buildings water my god my god she has been flying for 12 years have you seen buildings in new york another person he says mom this is mark bingham mom can you hear me we have been hijacked do you believe the question to be asked if i am going to speak to my mom I will say Zakir. I will not say Zakir. Next speaking, he said I am Mark Bingham. Mom, I am Mark Bingham. If Mark has to speak to the mom, he will say Mark. He will not say Mark Bingham. He gives systematic proofs. Do you speak to your mother telling you something? So all the proofs, all the phones were taped down, and then he did a survey that can the mobile phone work at 32,000 feet? When a survey was done at 4,000 feet, the chances of mobile working is 0.4 percent. At 8,000 feet, it is. 0.1 percent and 32,000 feet, it is 0.006 percent. 0.006. There is no chance. And the documentary says that today U.S. is spending millions of dollars to reach mobile at that height. In 2001, they did it. <laughs> Then there are many documentaries. Then the documentary says that there are black boxes. Every plane has got two black boxes, and the black boxes can withstand a temperature of 3,000 degrees centigrade for several hours. and in just 1000 or 2000 degrees all the black boxes have been destroyed he goes on systematically and immediately after a couple of weeks osama bin laden he gives an interview on the umma magazine and he says that i am a muslim i will not lie according to me killing innocent women 
is prohibited, it is wrong. Killing innocent children is wrong. Killing any innocent human being is wrong, and Islam condemns it. Osama bin Laden giving an interview and saying that. Couple of days back, you get a video clipping from Al Jazeera. Osama bin Laden training 9-11. Because 75 professors say it, and inside job, now they manipulate, and after five years, they're showing on the television. Why? So here we realize everything, it was inside job. And these 75 professors, they have promised, by God, we will come to the bottom of it. Regarding the second attack at Pentagon. At Pentagon, when the airplane crashed, there was no scraping on the grass. Nothing. Only a hole in the Pentagon. And the hole was only equal to the body of the plane. And we see a crater, and they showed on the television. But when the wings went, the wings weren't seen outside, neither were the window panes damaged of the Pentagon. If a plane body goes in and the wing stays out, either the wing will remain outside or the window pane will damage. The building was intact. So how could only in the circumference of a body of a plane, how can the wings go in as well as the tail? We fabricated. The people who said that, you know, the plane went just 40 feet above my head. Today science tells us that Boeing is flying at 40 feet above my head, that car will fly away. <laughs> An interview was taken of ex-military person, he said, it sounded like a missile. It had to be a missile. The missile would make that hole. And there was no debris, there was debris only a little bit debris. There was no part of the plane found there. There was only a small engine of a fighter plane found there. Even in the other place, they only find the crater. Time doesn't permit me. The amount of ample of evidence given there, even a fool will know that this has an inside job. But it doesn't convince George Bush. And what they say, the reason is only to attack Afghanistan, Iraq, and then Iran. They have been predicting that Iran is going to be attacked. They want to have control of the oil rich countries. So this terrorist attack is for what? One is injustice. Second is for money. It's for power. And many politicians find that he's going to lose the vote. He creates a fear psychosis. Okay, you better elect me, otherwise the Muslims will get you and they elected. Same thing in Gujarat. A fear psychosis was created. If you don't elect us, the Muslim will kill you and the government came back in power. So what we realized that this was nothing but an inside job. And there are several tapes, not several VCDs available. 9-11, loose change, then night, many. And if you see all this, it is a blatant open secret that this attack on the Twin Towers was done by George Bush himself. Yeah. The last question of the day. So my question is very, very, very much basic to you. Uh, I believe that, uh, as you said, terrorism is a fight against injustice, right? I also believe that terrorism is somehow a fight against the government of by a common people. Kisi insan ke saath agar anyaay hota hai, tabhi wo jaake mazhab ke naam pe log ikhatta karta hai, fir you know he tries to fight against whatever has happened to him. But what I believe is, ek insan, ek normal person, you know, if somebody ham mein se agar koi gujarat mein hota, to shayad ham bhi wohi karte jo unhone kiya. मतलब और आप क्या कर सकते हैं आप पुलिस पे आपको भरोसा नहीं है जुडिशियल सिस्टम 10 साल लगा देगी तो एक नॉर्मल इंसान का कौन सा ऑप्शन बचता है अगर उसके साथ कुछ बुराई हो तो व्हाट वुड योर एडवाइस बी टू अ नॉर्मल मैन लाइक मी इफ समथिंग लाइक दिस हैपेंस टू मी व्हाट शुड वी डू आई एग्री विथ यू व्हाट यू आर सेइंग इफ दैट इफ इट हैपेंड विद यू और मी व्हेन वी सी आवर फैमिली मेंबर्स बीइंग किल्ड इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस आवर मदर्स एंड आवर सिस्टर्स बीइंग रेप आवर हाउस इज बीइंग व्हाट यू डू एंड आई एग्री दैट व्हाट यू डू द सेम थिंग a normal human being will do that. That's normal. Unless we have so much faith in Almighty God. I do agree with you. 99% human beings. Unless he's wearing bangles. Otherwise, this is a normal reaction. Unless a person has faith in Almighty God. Even I would want to do the same. If I did not know my Quran. If I did not know from the Quran, it is wrong. Because if I kill an innocent human being, I am behaving like the same person who scores problem injustice to me. Just because someone does injustice to me, it does not justify me to kill other innocent human being. Just because somebody has robbed me, I can't go and rob a third person. If I catch the person responsible and book him and punish him, that's a different case. But I cannot kill any innocent human being based on the logic of the Quran that it prohibits you from killing any innocent human being. I, because I know the Quran, I will not retaliate in that way. I will try and get evidence. I will try and convince the government if he goes scot free. What I say? That all those people responsible for these terrorist acts, whether done in Gujarat, in Bombay, right, whether the politicians, whether the police, whether people have killed, whether the people who did the bomb blast, even if they go scot free in this world, on the day of judgment, God will surely punish them. So we as Muslims believe 
as it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 185, that Kullu Nafsan Zaikatul Maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense on the Day of Judgment, because we believe this life is the test for the hereafter, we leave it. If we cannot do something here, we leave it for Almighty God to do the justice. And inshallah, we'll be punished in the hereafter. If we catch Hitler today, what punishment can you give him? Six million people answer, what punishment can you give him? You can kill him once. What about the remaining 5 million, 9 lakh, 99,999 people? Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 56 that those who reject our signs, we shall put them in the hellfires and as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. Today science tells us that there are pain receptors. So God tells that on the day of judgment, if the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. If God wants to incinerate Hitler, six million times we can do it, we can't do it here. So therefore we leave it to the main justice, main justice to God. We thank you all for being present here. We would have loved to put forward all your questions, Dr. Zaki would have not minded. There were questions like Islam was spread at the point of the sword, jihad and terrorism and many others. Inshallah at a future date we would get to hear more from Dr. Zakir. Jazakallah khairan. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this program possible for all of us present here today. And we thank all our guests to have heard the program with so much interest and enthusiasm. Thank you very much. Jadakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.